I'm going to show you some creative uses for the pen tool in Affinity Photo. So Affinity Photo is what we refer to as mixed discipline. Whilst it is traditionally a raster image editor, it can also deal with vector information. Now vector information is infinitely scalable and it can produce very sharp and clean looking imagery. However, what we can do is use various vector tools within Affinity Photo to enhance or augment a raster image. Case in point, let's take this photograph. And as we can see here, we've got some very faint crepuscular rays coming through and hitting the side of the road here. We can use the pen tool to seriously enhance the rays. So from my toolbar here, I can select the pen tool. Then I'll just zoom in. And what we can do is just single click to define the first point of a vector curve. Then we'll single click again to create the second point and so on. So what we want to do is just go around the area that's being hit by the light. And then I'll just draw another one round about here. And finally, to close the curve, I'll just click the first point again. So now we have a vector curve with no fill color. To change that, we can go to the color panel up here and we can just move any of these sliders and just create a pure white color for now. So this is obviously very sharp, which is not at all what we want for this image. So then we need to go to the effects panel and enable the Gaussian blur. Then we can drag the radius all the way up to its maximum value. Okay, this still doesn't look quite right. And also at this point, I'm going to use H on the keyboard to switch to the view tool. This just gets rid of those node bounding boxes so I can clearly see what I'm working on. Let's go across to the layers panel and find my vector curve layer. It's this one here. I'm going to change the blend mode. So on my blend mode drop down here, I might choose something like soft light. And immediately that result looks far more suitable. So let's just hide this layer and we can see the before and the after. So far so good, but let's say we wanted a slightly warmer color. Not a problem, just with the curve layer selected, we can tweak the color up here. So I'll just reduce the blue contribution here and maybe just bring green down slightly as well to create a warmer look to the crepuscular rays here. At this point then, we're not locked into this final result. Uh, let's say for example, the initial curve points we drew are not quite right. So again, with the curve layer selected, I'm going to long click on the pen tool to get to the flyout here and select the node tool instead. So the node tool is going to let us manipulate those nodes after we've created the vector curve. For example, I might click drag and move this node further here. Perhaps I'll just move these nodes back a bit as well. And then we can also click drag in between the nodes to add some curvature, like so. Okay, and I think I'm quite happy with this result, so I'll leave it there. Once again, I'll press H on the keyboard to switch to the view tool located up here. And that's a great little tip if you ever just want to quickly see the result without any bounding boxes or other information. Okay, one final look at using the pen tool then. And again, I was talking about sort of enhancing imagery using sharp lines and curves. So in this case, we can make these windows a bit more appealing and make the whole image look perhaps a bit more vectorized. So again, I'll just long click into my tools fly out here and select the pen tool. Then I'll just click and add some nodes over this window pane. And once again, just single click on the first node to close that vector curve. And once again, to add a color fill, I just need to tweak any of these sliders and I'll go for a pure white once again. Okay, so now 
again, just using H to switch to the view tool. If we zoom in, this is perhaps too sharp. Not a problem because like we did before, we'll just go across to the effects panel, enable the Gaussian blur and just bring it up slightly. Just so we're adding a tiny bit of blur to the edges here. And then finally, if this looks perhaps too stark, then we'll just reduce the opacity slightly to bring through some of the original detail. And then we need to take care of the other window. Now we could use the pen tool and draw out some more vector curves. Another approach, which is perhaps a bit quicker, is to use duplicate. So on Mac, that's command J. On Windows, it will be control J, like so. Then we can long click here, select the node tool, and we just need to move the nodes across. So I'll click drag to lasso select these two nodes, move them across here, then click drag to lasso select these two nodes and bring them across here. And then I just need to zoom in and single click to select each node in isolation and just move each node into its respective location, like so. And there we go. Let's just shift click to select these two curve layers and hide them so we can see the before and the after. So there we go, a couple of little creative techniques for you involving the pen tool and by extension the node tool.